Good evening. We are in chapter 6 of the Gospel of John, verse 22. We have just heard that Jesus walked on the sea, meaning the full domination over all earthly powers and earthly kingdoms, and telling them that it is I, do not be afraid, as we heard in verse 20. And prior to this passage, you hear the feeding of the 5,000 with the five loaves and the two fish, which is a representation of the Old Testament scripture. Therefore, it's a repetition that Jesus repeats this time to uh, the people as he presents, meaning that he is the final authority on the scripture and no one else. So now we get to verse 22, having heard these passages. On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except that one which his disciples had entered and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples but his disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. Notice how much detail the author of this gospel is giving you to make you understand that these people were fed. Remember, it says here clearly in verse 23, they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. Remember the issue of giving thanks, if charistia, that's why we call it on Sunday, the Eucharist. It means to give thanks. So therefore, they came in to, to seek Jesus in 24, now 25. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. There you go. So it was not a sign. So don't go around finding a travel agent to take you there so you can visit the church. It has nothing to do, trust me. Uh, the church they built over that area most likely is false. That area was destroyed so many times and built so many times and rebuilt that they lost track, my friends. It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with what Christ is trying to do. Christ is on a mission. Okay? That's why when I came here four years ago to the cathedral, I was on a mission. And everything I did, people questioned in the beginning. And then they said, oh, it worked. I said, yeah, of course it's going to work. So what's the issue then? Trust. You have to trust in what Jesus gave you, that bread he gave you, is his word. Those were the five loaves, the five books of the Old Testament, and the two fish, the teaching, the prophets, the writings. You can you imagine why it's five loaves and two fish? And then it says there were 12 baskets left over? Because it's the disciples' turn to teach. And since this is being recorded, let me repeat, so you don't think there was a mistake on my end. Because YouTube now becomes universal, you know, in, the, in, the, in regards to the 12 baskets. It's the disciples, the 12 disciples, they have to now teach the same word that they just ate. How can you be a disciple if you don't take anything, you don't take something from your teacher? So food is always a symbol, a mechanism, let's say, a literary mechanism, okay, that is the teaching. That's why after the resurrection, at the end of John, it says there was fish and bread again. That's all they ate was fish and bread. Obviously, Jews, like Arabs, they're very good with food. There are millions of different recipes and different things. All they had was fish and bread. Oh, come on, I don't believe it. 
So why does the gospel then have fish and bread over and over and over? Because it's from God. That's why we use bread and wine on Sunday. It's from God. What bread did you do? What wine? You worked on it a little bit, but uh, he initiated. He's the source. That's why you tell him in the liturgy, thine own of thine own. It already belongs to you. So you gave it to us. Now we're giving it back to you. So bless it and give it back to us. I don't know what, back and forth. Okay, so this is the importance of bread. That these people, Jesus told them, because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. Meaning when you eat regular bread, tomorrow you have to eat again. Remember the Lord's Prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. Meaning the parable is that every day you have to eat bread, but that's not what the prayer is talking about. And that's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about, it says here what? Very clearly, which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Notice the question in 28 is, what should they do? So he was talking about bread. And he was saying, I'm going to give you the bread that you actually need, not the physical one. And they answer him the correct way. Very clearly, that they have to do something. And Jesus in 29 answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you may believe in Him whom He sent. Therefore they said to Him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So obviously, they did not completely understand. He told them earlier, don't go for the bread which perishes. So now they want, just like their fathers in the desert, which was, by the way, bad news, you know, when he gave them from heaven, it's just to give them strength in order to get to the mountains. We can give them the law. <laughs> it is not so he can feed them and become a drive through for them. Then Jesus said to them in 32, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is He who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to Him, Lord, give us this bread always. Notice the parable continues. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Meaning his authority that he is the son who is in charge. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Which means what? He said he's the bread of life. So far so good. And he's saying he came down from heaven. But he did not come to do his own will, but the will of him who sent him. Which means there was what? A message. There was something to do. There was a mission. It was a job. When you say his will, what, does, what is the will of the Father? You will hear it now. 39. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. Meaning that he came to save the world, and he has to bring the world and give it back to God. 
And this is the will of him who sent me that everyone who sees the son and believes in him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. Raise him up, meaning he will resurrect unto life eternal like we heard earlier in John chapter 3, like we heard earlier in John chapter 5, that whoever listens to the will of God and hears my words and believes in him who sent me shall have eternal life. So it is this trust in what God teaches us that gives us this eternal life. And this is the bread which he offers us to chew on it, to chew on it and completely receive it and that this will be what sustains us from heaven and not from earth, from God and not from man.